while, but guess who's back? John Daly taking a stroll down Victory Lane and honoring the king on his way, kissing the umbrella for Arnold Palmer and kissing it in and winning for the first time on the PGA Tour champions. John Daly takes the Insperity Invitational. You're going to see those highlights. Plus, what a finish we had at the Wells Fargo Championship. It all came down to the 72nd hole. Brian Harmon from 28 feet to win outright and avoid a playoff. Get some. Harmon gets his second career PGA Tour victory in thrilling fashion by birdieing the last round. And world number one, Dustin Johnson, put together quite the finish on Saturday and Sunday. Here he is for birdie on two. Yeah, off to a great start here at the second. A beautiful 18-footer for birdie. To be one under through two, and you're thinking something may happen today. He was at five under for the tournament for another birdie on four. Looks to me like he just widened his stance on the putter over the last couple days and started making some on Sunday. So DJ now at six under after birdie at 12 is second to 13. This is where he's improved so much. And really, all week long, he's hit his wedge shots close. Just has not been able to convert the birdie putts, but on wedges like that... Not a problem to five feet where he would make the putt and make birdie. So he was at eight under. DJ who made the cut on the number at one over now, just one off the lead. John Rahm is second to the par three ten. And we saw him chip in to finish yesterday on 18. And here again on 10, that one never looked like missing. What a great shot. Rahm fired up because he's at eight under. Just one shot back as well. Now it's third to the par five twelve. He's got tremendous length off the tee, hits his irons on a string, and these little wedge shots, these little controlled, spinny wedge shots is where he's excellent as well. That was a beautiful shot to six feet where he would also make birdie. So he was at nine under, your co-leader, Patrick Reed, here at the par 411. Big long swing, gets that face wide open, spanks the sand with the bounce of the club through impact. Beautifully played, he's got himself six or seven feet. And unfortunately, a little light on the speed, and that is a bogey for Patrick. So Reed had the lead entering the final round at that point, fell back to eight under, one back. Brian Harmon, second to 14. With a very difficult 14th hole here at Eagle Point. Not many birdies here today on this long par four, and a beautiful iron shot from 174. Can't do much better than that, George, with the kick in birdie. So Brian Harmon joins the party at nine under par. Now a lengthy birdie effort. The next hole. From about 40 feet here, just trying to gauge the speed down the hill. Look at all that break. And a little tentative here. You don't want to be leaving yourself too many of these length putts coming down the stretch on Sunday. That will test your metal. It's Harmon trying to clean up his par. And I thought this was a must make at this point. And when I saw this slip by, I really did think his chances were over. I thought he was cooked. He still had three holes to go, but with that bogey, fell one back to eight under par. Dustin Johnson, closing hole. After a massive 340-yard drive, going for this green and two, setting up for a high left-to-right fade and double crosses a little bit. Not too bad a spot left of the green, as long as he didn't have any tree trouble, as you can see, he did not. Trevor, here's where he struggled earlier in the week and seemed to turn around a bit on Sunday. Big swing from DJ. You can see he knows straight away the contact wasn't what he wanted. Leaves himself with a lengthy putt for birdie and a putt he knows he needs to make. So Dustin Johnson from 14 feet to post 9 under. Trevor, now you're, we're watching this putt. Both of us said he's going to make this. That's what world number ones do, Brian. <laughs> Dustin Johnson, your clubhouse leader at 9 under par, the gallery. Giving it to him because he went 67 67, posted 10 under on the weekend alone. Pat Perez for birdie, 16. He has been putting just beautifully, left hand low. Watch the reaction here. No chance. At oh, thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> That's a beautiful reaction. That right is. There. Pat praising the golf gods. Accepting the love. <laughs> and I thought this was such a beautiful play. He laid up to here on the par five, even though he could reach. Left himself with an easier pitch up the hill. And just plays this to perfection with all the pressure on the line. Leaves himself an uphill putt inside the right for that birdie on 18. So he also posts 9 under par. Rob, your co-leader, par 315. And see, he took the ball way up in the air, and the, I think the wind ate this one up because he likes it. 
but it comes up short and the bunker rolls back down on the down slope, short of the green, short side into the flag stick. And now for his second shot, does not have much chance here. It has a club face wide open. And really this is about all he could do, just hope to make a 10 or 15 footer for par. Just a mistake off the tee from John Rahm. So he would make bogey, drop a shot, so he's at eight under par, one back at the co-leaders. Brian Harmon, par 417. Now after that three putt, he really needs to get something going on these final two holes. Just a beautiful swing. Look at the balance there, holding his finish. And that is a tremendous shot on 17. So Brian Harmon tossing his hat back in the ring, birdies that hole. He's at nine under par. You see Pat and DJ, they're hanging at nine under. They just think, all right, Brian Parr's the last. Let's have a little playoff at the Wells Fargo Championship. We move to the 18th hole. Harmon playing his third. Very similar to where Dustin Johnson was a few groups before, and it just comes up a little bit short, hangs up in the thicker rough, leaves himself a long 25-footer. But as only champions could do, he has to regroup. Dustin Johnson looking on, probably expecting a playoff. But Brian Harmon, this is the strength of his game. No chance. Drops it. Buries it for the win. Love the reaction. Reaction is phenomenal as Brian Harmon wins the Wells Fargo Championship on the 72nd hole, getting his second career PGA Tour victory, a final round 68 as we look at that final leaderboard from Wilmington, North Carolina. Dustin Johnson, Pat Perez in a tie for second. Smiley Kaufman, a nice final round. Gets into a tie for fifth. Brian Harmer spoke with Todd Lewis after getting the W. You dream about winning on the 72nd hole, and that's what Brian did today. Brian, just talk about first your third shot and then that fourth shot being that wonderful putt you went through. Yeah, I was when I saw my ball at first, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to have a pretty good chip. And then when I dropped it, and just a lie, I just had some trees. I really wanted to go high with it, but the trees were kind of in the way. But, um. I knew that if I got it on the green, I'd at least have a good look at it. And uh, I wanted a little better look at it than that, but I'm glad it turned out the way it did. What were the emotions when you saw that ball drop? Oh, I couldn't. I mean, I could believe it because I've been rolling it so well this week. But uh, that thing went, that was about a foot short of it. And I said, that one is, that one's going home. Winning your first one on the PGA Tour the John Deere a few years ago obviously is special, but validating that victory with the second win, yeah. how tough do you think it was to get this victory, and what does it mean to you? It was. It was really tough. Um, after I won the first one, I kind of thought I was going to be there a lot, and it didn't work out that way. And I've, I've struggled struggled the, the, the next two years. Just had, didn't have, you know, I had good years on tour, but just never really got into the hunt like I wanted to. And I started getting to the hunt beginning of this year and started feeling you know, feeling like it was starting to come around. So I, I'm glad that it got validated. Today. Final thing, you, you get a lot of accolades with this victory. move top 10 in the FedEx Cup standings as well. Now that you have this second victory, is this optimism in your mind back now as you move forward? Yeah, yeah, it is. I, I know that if I stick to what I to what I know how to do, then then I can compete. And um, that's that's the biggest thing out here is just believing that you can compete. You took down some mighty good players today, including John Rahman, number one, Dustin. Welcome back to Golf Central to a couple of the Chasers. World number one, Dustin Johnson, had this for birdie on the last. He knew he had to make it, George, to have any chance at all to win this golf tournament. Expect anything different from world number one? Seems like he always rises to the big moment, so he was the first to post nine under par. John Rahm had this to force a playoff, his eagle chip on 18. After hitting a beautiful five-wood second shot that ran through the back, as he hit it, you could hear he didn't like the line that it came out on. Brian Harmon is the champion. The final leaderboard from the Wells Fargo Championship is Brian Harmon gets to celebrate his second W out on tour. John Rahm had a solo fourth. Kevin Tway and soon you'll know both had nice weeks getting into the top five with a T5 finish. Dustin Johnson, though, just short, as was John Rahm, both those guys in the mix. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew I needed uh, to hit, you know, to, to play really well um, today if I wanted any chance. Uh, you know, I thought I needed to get to 10 or 11. You know, I got to 9, which, you know, I played very well. Just, you know, hit a lot of great putts, um, you know, that burned the edges. But, you know, it was nice to finish with the birdie on 18 because, you know, give me some kind of chance. So just never know what will happen, though. Once I won Tory, I accomplished the main goal for the year, and I just kind of take it week for week and, and see what's, what's to come. Uh, honestly, being 100% honest, uh, having 
you know, than three tournaments, but I, you know, d had a decent chance of, chance of winning. I wish I would have been able to win one. Uh, but, you know, that's just golf and playing against the best in the world. And to be my first year and, and have as many options as anyone to, to win tournaments, you know, I should be, I'm, I'm extremely happy just about that. Hopefully I can keep it going and, and you know, maybe.